Let's go ahead and get out our Bibles. We've been looking at Isaiah 9, 6. Isaiah 9, 6. Go ahead and go there in your Bible. We've been looking at Isaiah 9, 6. Tonight we're talking about daddy issues. Isaiah 9, 6. You know, it's so important that we see things through the eyes of the Father because His perspective is the best perspective. The way He sees things is the only way to see things. Some of the stuff we've been exposed to, even at your young age, some of the things that you've seen, some of the things that you've even experienced can have an effect on how you see everything else. What's been done to you, what's been said to you, all these things can change the way you see things. And the, the love of the Father would say, see things how I see things. See, God loves you so much, and He's not just God Creator. He wants to be God Father. And sometimes when we hear the word Father, there's a lot of things that can come up. You can think, you know, I don't have one, or the one I do have is never home, or maybe you have a good dad. Maybe the one you have, you know, gets drunk and lashes out. Maybe the one you do have, you've seen him do hurtful things to your mom. So sometimes when you say Father, there's a lot of stuff that can crop up. It could be, you know, you've seen um, other kids have dads that play with them and, and play catch, but you don't have a dad like that. A lot of stuff can come up when you hear the word father. That's why it's so important at your age, you get a grasp of who the father God is and who he wants to be in your life. Because regardless of how good or how crummy your earthly dad is, daddy God is way better. And he wants to be a father to you. He wants to be provider for you. He wants to be strength for you, and He wants to be security for you. Did you hear me? The Father God wants to be provider for you. He wants to be strength for you, and He wants to be security for you. See, there's so many young people that have daddy issues. Sometimes it's more obvious in girls, but the truth of the matter is, is it shows up in guys just the same. Guys, sometimes it's like, uh, I'm just gonna act like I'm good. I don't, I don't care that my dad's not around or I don't care that he, he acts that way. You know, you just act like I'm good. But see, if your heart has unforgiveness, has anger, has frustration towards your earthly dad, that is going to jack you up your whole life. And so tonight, as we're talking about this next part of Isaiah 9, 6, yes, it may seem pretty heavy, but the Spirit of God wants to lift some heaviness off of your hearts so that you can live the rest of your life embracing His love and being able to do the call that He's called you to. Because the enemy, what His plan for you is, the enemy's plan is for you to either A, just be mad at your earthly dad, be unforgiving, be rejected by him and be hurt, or number two, the enemy would even want you to put all of your trust in your earthly dad and no trust in the father. Or number three, just be so casual with your relationship with God that you never even see him as your father. See, the enemy would want nothing more than for you to have daddy issues. See, it's not the, father's God, the father God's heart for any dad to walk away, for any dad to hurt you, to reject you, to say he's gonna show up and then doesn't show up. See, that's not God's heart, do you understand? And that's why he said, I'm gonna set this up in such a way that I will be a father to the fatherless. I will be a father to even those who have a good father. I'm gonna be a better father. They can put their trust in me, do you understand? I don't want you to grow up with daddy issues and neither does the father. And so tonight we're gonna get some things resolved. Whenever you hear the word Father from this night on, there won't be this hurt. There won't be this pain. There'll be this picture of God because He is your Father. He loves you. He wants to provide for you. He wants to give you security and He wants to give you strength. And y'all, He's the only one that can do it. I have a great dad. I have a great dad that loves me. I'm very blessed. I had a great dad. Did, did I choose my dad? No. I have a great dad. Is he perfect? No. No parent is perfect, do you hear me? 
I have a great dad. But still, I cannot get my ultimate needs met from my earthly dad. That's not his job. His job was to train me and to love me, train me in the admonition of the Lord, and he did that. But listen, even if you didn't have that, you have a Father God that wants to train you by the Spirit, that wants to lead you. He's placed leaders in your life to be a figure for you, to show you what it looks like to worship in church, to show you what it looks like to give, to show you men what it looks like to love your spouse. Do you understand? See, the Father God has provided Father for you. But until you forgive your earthly dad, until you completely trust in him, until you begin to be serious about your relationship with him, then you'll always have daddy issues. You'll look for the world to provide for you. You'll look for relationships, friendships to give security to you. And you'll look for your own confidence to give you strength. And it will fail every time. It will fail every single time. So look what it says in Isaiah 9, 6. We've looked at these things. Sunday, first thing we talked about, Jesus was our Savior. But then what else does it go on to say? For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. That's what we're talking about tonight. We've talked about the wonder-working power of God that lives on the inside of you. Jesus showed, it, showed us how it looks, right? Everywhere he went, there was signs, miracles, there was wonders, right? He showed us what it looked like to walk in that power, in that wonder-working power. And then what else? The Bible says, I'm a very present help in time of need. He showed us help. He gave us the right advice. He sent his word, right? He sent the Holy Spirit. Remember, he went to heaven. He said, I'm going to go to heaven. I'm going to ask the Father to send the Spirit so that you always know exactly what to say, exactly what to do. Should we ever say, I don't know what to do? No. Why? Because God knows, the word knows, and by the Spirit, he'll reveal it to me, right? So we have Jesus, our Savior. We have Jesus, our wonder-working miracle power that lives on the inside of us. We have a counselor. We have an advisor. What else do we have? Mighty God. He's mighty. He's mighty. He's strong, right? He's mighty. Even in, when you feel weak, guess what? The Bible even says, let the weak say, I am strong. He's a mighty God, right? He's mighty. And now we're talking about the fact that he's an everlasting father. This is Jesus. This is Jesus. Now look on the screens at John 14, 7. Some people came up to Jesus and were like, who's God? Who's God? Show us God. Show us God. And look what Jesus said. If you had known me, you would have known who? My father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. See, Jesus gave us a picture of the father God. Jesus gave us a picture of the father God. See, whenever everyone was hungry, Jesus showed us the heart of the Father. What did he do? When everyone was hungry, Jesus showed us a picture of the Father God. What did he do, Hannah? He what? What did he do? He fed the people. He provided, right? So Jesus showed me a picture of my Father. What is a Father supposed to do? Provide, provide, give me strength, give me security, protection, right? This is the Father. This is our Father. Say, that's my Father. See, whenever you hear the word Father, right now you might think about your earthly dad, and that's fine, but I want us to take our, take our mind up a notch and begin to think about the Father God, y'all, because He is the ultimate provider. You might have a dad that provides for you, and that's awesome. Gosh, be grateful and be respectful. You might have a dad that gives you security. You, you feel safe with him. Gosh, be grateful and be respectful. Don't take that for granted. Don't take that lightly. There are kids all over the world that don't have that. There's kids in the room that don't have that. Don't treat that casually. Do you understand? There's a father that will give you strength, that will empower you with encouraging words, right? That's what Jesus came to do. He came to show us what the father looks like. We're going to look at this story right now of what our Father God looks like. Our Father God is a giver, but he's also somebody that is quick to forgive and he's always ready. Say always. 
He's always ready to give you the best when you position yourself as his kid. See, until you say, God, you are God and I'm not, I'm gonna allow you be my father, he will not force himself on you. He won't say, I'm gonna be your father, I'm gonna be your provider, I'm gonna be your strength, I'm gonna be your security. He won't force himself on you. You have to say, God, I want you to be my father. I want you to be my provider, my security, and my strength. So there's a story that Jesus told because he wanted us to see the Father. What did Jesus want us to see? The Father. See, he wanted us to get our mind up. Do you understand? Because he knew there was gonna be some dads that didn't make good choices. There was gonna be some dads that walked away. There was gonna be some dads that said things to their kids that hurt them. He knew. And so he said, okay, I'm gonna be a father. He even said in his word, I will be the father to the fatherless. I will be the father to those that are hurting. So Jesus came and he said, I'm going to show everyone, I'm going to show all of humanity what their father God wants to do for them. And so he told this story about these two sons, these two sons and this father. So I want you to take a look at how this father treated these two sons. God's story, two sons and a father. So part of God's story is about Jesus wanting us to know how much God loves us. Sometimes Jesus taught by using parables. A parable is a pretend story that teaches us a lesson. Jesus once told a parable about two brothers and a dad, and it begins like this. This dad had two sons. We call one the older son because he's, well, older. We call the other the prodigal son because he liked to waste money buying things he didn't need. One day, the prodigal son went to his dad and said, Dad, give me my share of your money. See, he knew when his dad died, he and his brother would split the money. But he didn't want to wait for his dad to get old and sick and die. He wanted money now. You might think most dads would say, no way. But his dad actually gave it to him. Kids, remember, this is a parable. I wouldn't try that at home. Anyway, the son took the money and ran away. We don't even know if he said goodbye. And for a while, he bought everything he wanted. He bought stuff for his friends, too. He had so much fun spending money that he never bothered to earn any. Soon, he had nothing left. So now he needed a job to buy food. Problem is, the only job he could find was working for a farmer, feeding pigs. You know, animals that enjoy snorting and rolling around in the blood. And to make matters worse, his friends stopped liking him since he stopped buying them things. Although people who hang around just because you're buying them things are not real friends. Here was the prodigal son, stuck feeding pigs. No friends, no home, and no food. He was so hungry, he wanted to eat the smelly, soggy pig food. He felt pretty sorry he had run away. Have you ever done something and felt sorry about it later? It's not fun to feel that way, is it? Well, one day, the prodigal son remembered how the people who worked for his dad had lots of food to eat. Hmm. He didn't think his dad would want him back as a son, but maybe he could be a servant in his dad's house. But this idea was risky. He had been so mean to his dad. He had taken money and run away. He'd spent every penny. He had acted like he never wanted to see his dad again. The prodigal son knew he didn't deserve to go home. But if he didn't ask his dad for a new job, he could die. So he decided to go back to his dad's house. Well, while the prodigal son was still pretty far away, his father saw him coming. And guess what? His dad started running to him. Then he hugged his son and even kissed him. Really, the Bible says that. In fact, he threw the prodigal son a huge welcome home party and even gave him special gifts. Meanwhile, the older brother was out in the fields, working. Kids, remember, this brother had been home the whole time, obeying his dad while his younger brother ran away. So when the older brother found out his dad was throwing a party for his younger brother, he was mad, no. really mad. He had never gotten a party. He thought his little brother deserved punishment, not a welcome home celebration. Jesus told this story because sometimes we act like the prodigal son. We do things that make God sad, like how the son took his dad's money and ran away. Other times, we act like the older son. We follow God's rules, but forget how special it is to obey him. Maybe we even want people who disobey to get punished, instead of being excited when they decide to follow God. But Jesus wants us to know that no matter what we do, he loves us. Just like that father. And that's the story of the prodigal son. Now, I want you to notice what that father did. The father loved, right? 
He provided for the son, but the son had to make a choice, right? And both sons made their own choice, right? One son took what was given and ran away, walked away from security, from protection, from strength, right? One son did it, just walked away. The other son had it, but guess what? What was he? He was always mad. He was always frustrated. He never really took advantage of it. Do you understand? Do you realize the father wants to be your provider, your security, and your strength? And so we have to begin to see him as that. He is our father. And y'all, just like we sang, he's a good father. Look what the Bible says in 1 John 3, 1. It says this, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Say, I'm a child of God. If you're in here tonight and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, you're going to have an opportunity to do that. But whenever you say a prayer, according to Romans 10, 9 and 10, that means you step into his family and he becomes your heavenly father. And so now you don't have to be moved by what happens down here on earth with your earthly dad. You know, I've got protection, I've got security, I've got strength, and I've got a provider for me in my heavenly father. He says, what manner of love, say, God loves me. Say, my father loves me. Say, my father loves me. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. There's a couple of reasons why people have a hard time allowing God to be their father. Three things. I want you to write them down. And I want you to identify as we go through these three things, where do I fall? Because listen, I don't want you to have daddy issues. Say, I don't want daddy issues. I don't want daddy issues. Y'all, regardless of whether your earthly dad is good or not, you have to begin to see the Father God as your provider, as your security, as your strength. Do you understand? You have to begin to see the Father God because the enemy would want nothing more than for you to be so mad at your earthly dad or so dependent on your earthly dad that you miss out on what he has for you. Do you understand? Y'all, this is a big deal. People grow up mad at their dad and it jacks up their life. And God doesn't want that for you. Do you understand? And if you would just grab a hold of this in your little hearts, and decide, I'm not going to allow what my earthly father did or didn't do move me. I'm going to allow the love of the father to move me from this moment on. Then you will find yourself so free. Y'all, you'll be so free to do all that he's called you to do. Do you understand that? So free. So free. Confident. Not looking to some boy or some girl to say you're awesome. Not looking to the world to think you're great. You'll know that your Father God thinks you, you're great. Number one reason, are you ready? Why is it hard for people to see God as their Father? Number one, you have unforgiveness. You're just mad at your real dad. He walked away. Y'all, and I'm not saying what your real dad did was right, okay? I'm not justifying what he did. But here's the thing. You will live your whole life blaming other people if you don't decide, I'm not going to eat poison and accept, expect someone else to die. I'm not gonna stay in unforgiveness because they were wrong and expect my life to get better. It's not gonna work. So how do I not embrace the love of the Father? Why am I not able to, to really com confide in Him and, and see Him as my provider, see Him as my strength, see Him as my security? Because I have unforgiveness. I haven't forgiven him. I haven't let my earthly dad go. I'm mad at him. I'm mad at him for what he did to my mom. What he did to your mom was wrong. The way he left you was wrong. The many times he said, I'll be there at six and he never showed up and you were waiting at the door, it was wrong. But you staying mad at him, it will not help your life. Do you understand? It will create issues in your life. And those issues don't go away because you come to church. Those issues go away when you choose to say, God, you are my father. And yeah, that hurt, but you're my healer too. And so I'm going to forgive them for doing those things. I'm going to forgive my dad for doing those things. Am I going to position myself around him and just be hurt by him on purpose? No. I'm going to be led by your voice. But I'm not going to be mad at him. I'm not going to sit at home and say, gosh, I, you know, nobody loves me and this kid has a dad and I don't have a dad. No, I do have a dad. 
I have a dad that created the entire universe. I have a dad that knows every hair on my head. I know a dad that knows more about me than any earthly dad could know about me. But you have to choose to forgive. See, why do people not see the father? Why do kids not see God as their, as their father, as their provider, as their strength, as their security? Because they're still mad at their real dad. So tonight, I just want to encourage you, if that's you, I want to encourage you to forgive him. We're going to have an opportunity at the end of service. And Mr. Craig is going to stand in. And you're going to have an opportunity to walk up to him as if it was your dad. And guess what you're going to say? You're going to say, I forgive you. You're going to have an opportunity to look at Mr. Craig. He's a dad. He's not your dad. He's a couple of you, your dads. But you're going to have an opportunity to look at him. And you're going to picture your dad. Because some of you might not have ever seen your dad. Do you understand? Gosh, and that hurts, you know? That creates something in you. But tonight, the Holy Spirit, by the Spirit of God, He wants to heal your heart. You're going to have a supernatural encounter with the love of the Father tonight if you just decide to forgive. And that's all you're going to say to Him. You're going to say, Dad, and you're going to picture Him, right? You can even close your eyes. But He's going to stand in as if your real dad was standing there. And you're going to say, Dad, I forgive you. And Mr. Craig is going to say, guess what? Thank you. Because here's the thing, y'all. If you still keep that unforgiveness, I'm not saying what he did to you was right. What he did was wrong. All of you deserve God the best. You deserve the best. What he did, what your dad did was not right. If he hurt you, if he walked away, if he said he would be there at six and he didn't show up, that was wrong. But you continuing to be mad at him, it will hurt your life. And God doesn't want your life to be hurt. That's why he sent Jesus. Whenever God was up there and Jesus, he was like, Jesus, you're gonna die on the cross, yes, but you're gonna show them me. You're gonna show them a father that loves them. That just like in that story is waiting for them at the end of the road every day. Instead of you waiting for your dad at the door, guess what? He's waiting for you at the door. He's so excited to spend time with you. He's so excited to go outside and play with you. Well, I don't really see him, but he's there. He's more real than any earthly dad. Do you understand? Because he goes throughout eternity. So number one, why can I not receive the love of the Father? Why is it like a brick wall? Like it's just not clicking because there's unforgiveness in your heart towards your real dad. Number two. Why cannot I not receive the love of the Father? I don't trust Him. I don't trust Him. You know, maybe there was a time in your life that you prayed and you asked God for something and it didn't happen. Maybe there was a time in your life where you prayed for, for something to change in your parents and it didn't happen. And so in your heart, there's just like this little bit of thing that says, uh, I don't trust Him. But here's the thing, the Bible says this in Proverbs 3, 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart. See, the enemy is the God, little g, of this world. Do you understand? He's the God of this world. And so everything bad comes from him. Only good comes from God. So I wanna encourage you tonight, if you have lost trust in the Father, listen, he's still on the throne. He's not mad at you. He's not upset that you haven't trusted him. But I want to encourage you, begin to trust him. Begin to see him as a father that wants to provide, that wants to strengthen you. He wants to be your security. So you just decide, God, I'm going to trust in you. I refuse to allow the lies of the enemy, and that's what they were. Lies from the enemy. That his word didn't work because his word works. Listen, every time. Number one, you don't forgive your earthly dad. Number two, you don't trust him. You try to do your own thing. And number three, you treat the relationship casually. Isn't that what the second son did? He had his dad the whole time. And whenever the other brother came back, he just got mad, right? Like, why are you mad, bro? You've had this the whole time. So maybe you're not really walking in the provision, in the security and the strength of the father because you're really not seeing him as your provider, your security and your strength. You treat it casually. Maybe you've been a church kid. Maybe you've been in here your whole life, right? From nursery up until whatever grade you're in right now. And so you treat it casually. 
You will never see the provision, the security, and the strength that God has for you if you treat that relationship casually. Did that son? He didn't see it, right? The father had to remind him, bro, you've had everything I have this whole time. Anything you wanted, all you had to do was ask. And isn't that what the Bible say? Ask and you shall receive. So maybe you've got unforgiveness towards your real dad. Tonight I want to encourage you to forgive. Number two, maybe it's just you lost trust in him. You believe the lies of the enemy that his word doesn't work. Y'all, even if it was a little thing, that's a lie from the pit of hell. And you can trust in God. You can trust in him with your whole life, your future, everything about your life, you can trust in him. And so maybe tonight you just need to say, God, I put my trust back in you. I trust in you again. Or maybe number three, you've just been treating it casually. You've been saying, um, you know, going through the motions maybe. You say, yeah, God, you're a good, good father. That's who you are, that's who you are. But you're really just going through the motions. And tonight you wanna make a change. You wanna begin to see God and take advantage of all that he is as your father. 